Hello and welcome to episode 8 of Situational Awareness Matters Radio Show. I'm your host, Rich Gassaway. The purpose of this show is to improve situational awareness and decision making for individuals and teams who work in high risk, high consequence environments. The SA Matters mission is simple to help you see the bad things coming in time to avoid bad outcomes. In episode 2, I spoke a little bit about complacency. The feedback that I received was awesome. Thanks, everybody, for that. In this episode, I'll continue on this topic of complacency and share with you how a false alarm mindset can lead to complacency. In the Near Miss Report, we'll share an incident where complacency caused the firefighter to fall through a weakened floor as a, at a residential dwelling fire. And in the question answer segment, we'll explore why the blind search drill may be a setup for failure and consequence. Another false alarm, a tale of complacency. Complacency is a big deal for first responders because it impacts your situational awareness on multiple levels. I would like to give every responder the benefit of the doubt that if and when they find themselves being complacent, that it would not happen on purpose. In other words, I hope every responder desires to be diligent and alert, yet complacency still sneaks up on us. I recently had a close-up and personal experience that I'd like to share. If you follow my Twitter and Facebook updates, you know this. I travel. A lot. I'm sort of the living version of planes, trains, and automobiles. Except I'm not going to share my bed with John Candy. The popularity of the mental management of emergencies and the 50 Ways to Kill a First Responder program, both that are part of the Get in the Loop tour, keeps me nomadic about 200 days a year. Trust me, that's not a complaint. I absolutely love sharing my message with first responders. Even more, I love the feedback that the message gets that it's making a difference. And for that, I thank you very much. Recently, on one of my trips, I was startled awake at 2.53 in the morning by a fire alarm activation. The alarm only rang about 10 seconds. Knowing what I know about night clerks at hotels, I suspected the alarm had been prematurely silenced. My suspicion was confirmed when I went to the lobby and I heard the clerk on the telephone telling someone the alarm panel was indicating a fire pump was running. I was the only patron in the hotel who bothered to come to the lobby and that unto itself maybe speaks to the complacency of the general public. Another false alarm. As the building was sprinklered and there was no smoke in the lobby, I played it cool and poured myself a cup of coffee to see how things were going to play out. I was partly curious and, and partly angry that the clerk silenced the alarm without investigating the source. Then the fire department arrived. Three firefighters dismounted the engine and entered the lobby, and my disappointment with the entire situation rose to a new level. Every member of the crew had the flaps of their coats opened, no helmets, no SCBAs, no tools, no water can, no thermal imaging camera, which, in all fairness, they may not have had on their apparatus. They were no more prepared to fight a fire than I would have been if I came down to the lobby wearing Nomex boxer briefs. And where were all the guests? Surely I was not the only person who heard this alarm. But I was probably the only person in the hotel who had witnessed night clerks silencing alarms to avoid disrupting the slumbering guests. The Triple Whammy of Complacency There were three examples of complacency witnessed in a span of 10 minutes. Complacent act number one. The night clerk was complacent for silencing the alarm too quickly, assuming the activation was just another fire alarm. Complacent act number two. The patrons of the hotel only heard the alarm that lasted 10 seconds, leading them to assume that the alarm was just another false alarm. Complacent act number three, the fire department responded to the alarm with their guard down, way down. I could tell by their movement, their demeanor, their comments, and their attire. For them, this was just another false alarm. I did not sleep well during what was left of my night, 
As I laid there, I imagined how the outcome of this seemingly benign event could have been tragically different if only a few circumstances were changed. A culture of complacency. Whose job is it to create and nurture a culture that prohibits complacency? Is it the senior management, the training officers, the company officers, or the individual firefighters? I would say it's the job of everyone, because no one is exempt from the potential consequences. It is evident to me that a complacent coworker may be more dangerous than any broken piece of equipment on your apparatus. Equipment problems are easy to fix, repair, or replace. But when a coworker has a complacent mindset, it can be much more challenging to repair or replace. Contrast this to a similar experience I had during a visit to another fire department a few months ago. During that visit, there was also a fire alarm activation in my hotel at night. This may seem an odd stroke of bad luck, but keep in mind I spend hundreds of nights in hotel rooms. My observation there, however, was very different. These firefighters came off the truck ready to work with a working fire mindset. No complacency to be found here. It was all business. Full gear, SCBAs, tools in hand, water, flashlights, thermal imaging camera. Just as it should be. Kudos to this fire department for setting a great example. Coincidentally, the hotel clerk did not silence the alarm at this hotel, and the lobby was full of patrons. I expect it has much to do with the fire marshal of this particular department being proactive and educating desk clerks on how to handle alarm activations. Advice. The problem with complacency is it can creep into how the members of your department do things in a sneaky, almost unnoticeable way. That is, unnoticeable until some nerdy retired firefighter turned cognitive researcher happens to be hanging out in the lobby of your hotel when the fire alarm is activated. Trust me, he notices. If your mindset leads you to believe that you're responding to just another fire alarm, then your guard will be down. Not only can this cause you to be physically ill-prepared for the potential call, but it can also cause you to be mentally ill-prepared for the potential dangers the call holds. Early in my career, I was taught to prepare and respond to every call with the mindset that I would get there and find the worst-case scenario situation possibly imaginable, and then I'd get into the mental mindset to be ready for it. Ironically, as I have often talked about in my articles, the repetition of physical and mental preparation for worst-case scenarios builds both cognitive and muscle memory. This means my mental and physical preparation, getting of the mindset that all responses held the highest potential of risk, would become a habit, my automatic, scripted, subconscious performance under stress. This paid off for me in spades throughout my career, and it will for you too. Conversely, if the mindset becomes one of complacency, it's just another fire alarm triggers the mind and the body to behave accordingly. In this state of low arousal, the senses neither capture nor comprehend clues and cues that can form situational awareness. Being on guard helps improve situational awareness. During my research, I interviewed a commander who responded to another fire alarm in a building that they had had numerous calls to in the past. His mindset was one of complacency. Arrive and reset the alarm was his mindset. But this time, it was a working fire and people were trapped. He described the impact vividly. For those who have my Fireground Command decision-making book, you know I wrote about this incident and the impact that it had on this officer. This commander admitted having a very difficult time recovering from his complacent mindset and getting geared up for the task that he was facing. His crew was also complacent, just another fire alarm mindset, which compounded the problem. Respond to every call for service as if it holds the potential to cause you great harm. 
Be vigilant in your capturing of clues and cues, understanding what they mean. No responder ever goes to a call thinking it's going to be their last. But many catastrophic outcomes result from complacent mindsets. Here's some topics you can discuss with your crew on complacency. Discuss a time when you were complacent on a call and the potential impact it could have had on you or other responders. Discuss some specific strategies you use to avoid complacency as a first responder. Discuss some strategies that can be used to help others over the affliction of complacency. Discuss with coworkers how you can help each other avoid a complacent mindset. And now it's time for a situational awareness near miss lesson learned. This lesson learned comes to us from the firefighter near miss reporting system where lessons learned become lessons applied. And here is how the reporter provided the lesson learned. We were dispatched to a structure fire at a tri-level style home with a well-involved fire on the lower level. Upon completing a 360, it was noticed that the fire was auto-exposing to the second floor in the attic space. Once the body of fire was knocked down, my partner and I proceeded to the second floor to check for exposure. I entered a room and was walking toward the window when the floor gave way, causing me to drop into the room of origin. My partner called a mayday, and after regaining my composure, I notified command that I was okay, and a verbal and sight contact was made with my partner, and we proceeded out of the structure. Lessons Learned the biggest lesson learned was we had become complacent. Training and reinforcing that training is also important. Always be aware of the situation and the surroundings. Why is it so easy for the reporter of this incident to see the errors of his ways after the fact, but not in the moment? This is the nature of flawed situational awareness. The inability to see bad things and time to change bad outcomes. Even though this firefighter was not seriously injured, the outcome could have been catastrophic. Anytime fire is burning below where firefighters are operating, the structure is weakening. Heat causes structural components to decompose. As they decompose, they weaken. All the while, the enemy of every building, gravity, is trying to kill the building by pushing down on it with a constant force. If gravity had its way, every building would be flattened. But it doesn't, because the components of construction hold the building up against the forces of gravity. Fire-weakened structures are no match for the downward force of gravity. Add the weight of contents and water and firefighters, and you're able to forecast the outcome, which is Level 3 Situational Awareness. If you want to read this report and others, you can visit the Firefighter Near Miss Reporting System at firefighternearmiss.com. If you've experienced or witnessed a near miss and would like to be interviewed on this show, visit my companion site, closecallsurvivor.com, and click on the Contact Us link. Thank you in advance for sharing your lessons so that others may live. If you're interested in attending a live event, you can check out the Situational Awareness Matters tour stop schedule at samatters.com. Click on the Program and Keynotes tab below the header, then click on the Events Schedule tab. If I'm in your area, I hope you'll consider attending a live event. If you're not able to attend a live event, consider signing up for the SA Matters Online Academy. The Academy contains videos and articles that cover the same content as the three-day live tour event, delivered in 14 modules that you can go through at your own pace from your own computer. The Academy Plus version includes four books that are referenced throughout the Academy. The Plus version is a great bargain because the tuition simply covers the cost of the books, making the Academy free. Just click on the link below the header on the SA Matters homepage titled Online Academy.
And now it's time for a question from an SA Matters community member. This question comes from an attendee from the Mental Management of Emergencies program in Ventura County, California. If sending firefighters into a training scenario with a blackened out face piece is training for failure, then tell us why and how we should fix the problem. The training for failure does not come from training firefighters to operate in a zero visibility condition. In fact, that's an essential skill for firefighters. The failure comes from blackening out the face pieces and sending firefighters in to training fires. As you understand how the brain learns, the solution becomes easier to comprehend. When conditions rapidly go to zero visibility in the presence of high heat, the firefighters are in a pre-flashover condition. It is in these conditions that, that we do not want firefighters to continue their mission of searching for victims or trying to find the seat of the fire. We want them to leave the environment, but many do not. They stay true to the mission and forge onward. This is because they were trained to do that. The fix, in a nutshell, is to send firefighters into training situations with good visibility, then at some point blacken out the face pieces and teach them how to get out. This small change is enough to shift the mindset from one of being true to the mission of going inward and onward to one of getting out and surviving. It's amazing how many firefighters that I have talked to and interviewed and asked them, when you've been inside doing a search and rescue operation in a training setting, how many times has the instructor ever told you, stop, conditions have changed, heavy, thick, black, angry smokes come down to the floor, it's insufferably hot, you're in pre-flashover conditions, now get out, go, 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 get out, and abandon the search for the victim? It's unheard of in the training, but there are conditions when we must do that. Firefighters need to learn when and how to leave when the conditions are pre-flashover. Alternatively, having firefighters continue on and press on in zero visibility, high heat, pre-flashover conditions is training for failure. Well, that's it. Episode 8 is complete. Thank you for sharing some of your valuable time with me today. I sincerely appreciate your support of my mission. If you like the show, please go to iTunes and search for SA Matters Radio and subscribe to the podcast and leave your feedback in a five-star review. This will help others find the show. You can also sign up for the free SA Matters monthly newsletter by visiting samatters.com and clicking on the red box on the right side of the homepage. Be safe out there, and may the peace of the Lord and strong situational awareness be with you always. You've been listening to the Situational Awareness Matters radio show with Dr. Richard B. Gassaway. If you are interested in learning more about situational awareness, human factors, and decision-making under stress, visit samatters.com. If you are interested in booking Dr. Gasway for an upcoming event, visit his personal website at richgasway.com.